Hey, what's up everyone? About to get into today's video, it's another one from the King's Indian Speedrun, going from 1100 to 1200 this time. I hope you've been enjoying the series, and in my opinion, this bracket and the ones coming are the most educational, so enjoy. All right, Ooh, we got almost the almost the 1200 here. Okay, well this one is probably going to be more Peart style. We'll see what he does. Some people go C4, Knight, C3, and then it pretty much transposes. Most... Oh. Am I falling into something again? Or did the same thing happen? I promise you this isn't the point of the speedrun. It's not supposed to be the speedrun where I win the E4 pawn and just win the entire game and that's it, that's the speedrun. That's not what I intended when, when I set out to do this, but that's what it's looking like. See Seth, just bringing uh, another knight here. I mean, I'm kind of curious if he's gonna take this because we should know. This is not uh, this is not like a good thing for white, right? Hopefully we all know that. Let's see what he thinks about this. Because on the one hand, if you've made it all the way out there, you don't want to waste your time. You know? <laughs> you know, let me do this for free. So I thought he would get tempted by that. But he, he doesn't, he plays this, which is a better move for sure. So I'm actually wondering in this case, there's no way that I can just win a piece here, but I feel like I can come pretty close. So what about... It takes an e6 almost. I feel like there's a way to bait him. If I take and play c6, queen takes g6. Actually kind of looks like it works. d5, queen g3 with bishop h6 coming. Yeah, I don't know about that one little yucky so i think i'm gonna take and keep it uh, keep it simple bishop g4 actually loses a piece knight takes f6 with check and then queen takes g4 well i'll uh keep in line with our king h7 move here he sees it yeah for sure of course he does. Of course he sees it. Now I can't play this move because of queen takes b7, so I would even consider rook b8 here. Just gotta complete that development. Is this theory? Great question. I'm not sure I can produce the answer. Let's do exactly that. I'm not committing too many pawns forward, so. Okay, see this? I'm basically gonna play this. I'm not really gonna care about that. So I can take his pawn on a2. But once I get my e pawn up there, you guys know the drill. f4, sorry, f5, e4. Those are the plans. Yeah, let's make sure we even up the pawns first. But yeah, f5 is gonna be my next move probably. Thanks, uh, Leckerding2012 for the Prime sub. Four months, Johnny w 2 k as well. For 15 months at tier three. And also, Argog uh, for what looks like it could be a free piece. We take those. And we'll take with the pawn. Bishop here. His queen is uh, <laughs> running out of squares, eh, boys? Not a lot of uh, real estate left for that lady. That's a pretty good move, I would say, in terms of just, you know, saving the queen, which is the goal. Um, doesn't really matter which move we do. Both look pretty strong, but let's do go for this one. Uh, 
Um, okay, defend. Hi, Mon. You're so pleasant sober. Thank you. I take that as an insult. Let's go king g7. I actually like playing g4 here. Everything's kind of covered, but yeah, I like this. My bishop's covering everything. I'm up two pieces here, so. Yo, Kanti is in here, in the building. Well, it, he's not really doing too much with this tactic here. You know what I mean? Like, what's the threat, bro? You want to basically trade queens? That's all I see. What's up, Kanti? Thanks for the 36 months. He's not just here, guys. You didn't tell me Kanti's here. No, he's here and he's re -subbing. For three years. He's here and he's been here. Thank you to GM Kanti for the long time resub. Whopper Jr. 98 also coming in for 10 months. And Purella, hello, hello. 16 months too long? Well, you know what they say in the immortal words of Yasser Sarwan, you know? I'll always make the same mistake for more than 16 months. Looking forward to many more, Buterella. What's up, what's up? Take this. Something like this, and oh, okay. This, this helps a lot because he's dropping this pawn and then the bishops are gonna start to say hello. And bishops are looking to say hi. It's a serious move. GG. Add that to the win column. Honestly though, once again, I feel like, you know, we have to at some point reach the ELO. What do you guys think is gonna be the ELO where people do not blunder their E4 pawn? Because it just kind of sucks the life out of the position. Like these games are a lot easier as a result. Ooh, the Nederlands are coming though. And it looks like we might get the London against our King's Indian setup. I'm drinking a coffee here, Peterella. Someone just came in the chat and said that I'm very pleasant sober. And that's that's the energy I'm going for. Just a pleasant guy. Okay, so he's a he's what we call a sender. Let's take. Oh, bishop takes is interesting. The reason this move is kind of questionable to me is that a knight move next, I'd expect you have to just move your bishop away, so kind of losing some time there. Yeah, it actually is a London. I play the London the same way when I play white, bishop f4, knight c3, but it's kind of an advanced idea a little bit. Like, I, I don't think it's so obvious. Hey, cheers, King Spence. Hopefully we, we learned a thing or two, hey? I think we're going to approach maybe the most instructive ELOs pretty soon, which I I sort of expecting to be somewhere between 12 and 1500. Um, pawn takes here actually like really, really looks uh, nice. I'm going to do it. I know this uh, wouldn't be everyone's instant recapture. But the thing is, it's only temporary. My pawn's gonna get to f5, and my bishop will open up, so it's not like I'm blocking that piece forever. Hey, six beards. Yeah, the, the variation he did, Java Bandit, I cannot condone. <laughs> what he did, no. But up until he played e4, e4 was good. That position is definitely one that I've had many times before. All right, I'm thinking it's a restrict this knight a little bit. So let's start. 
Let's start by taking. Um, I think I'll throw this in. So we'll check the king because I know no matter what, you know, if something blocks on e4, they're going to lose a piece. And if something blocks on e2, okay, the bishop has to take a step back. It doesn't really want to do that. So that should be a good thing for me. Yeah, this, I don't think this knight really wants to go there. I'm going to go f5. I am making a threat here. Probably white needs to do something like that to stop it. I will yoink that pawn. <laughs> if we've learned one thing from this speed run, speed run is that we are definitely taking pawns when we can. Bishop back to g7 would have been fine, but at this point, I know that you know this knight is never coming near my king. The bishop's on the wrong color, so I'd actually like my king to make it to g7. So I don't think I want to put my bishop there. Let's see. Start with uh, queen d6, make a threat. Just the baby threat. I really just want to play bishop d7, but we've got the pawn to look out for. I think we'll just, uh, we'll go b6. And bishop d7 is my next move. Now the rooks are connected. This bishop looks really strong. Bishop takes d4 as a move. Um, I'm also thinking about just a6. Take care of the b5 square, and yeah, rook d8 for sure is my next move. King there, h5 is also a nice move because h4 and loosening up the g3 square, and if white plays h4 to stop me, then there might be some sacrifices. Okay, so this move I'm very happy to see. We always, always should be looking at that diagonal as soon as we see something like this. So as soon as I see this, yeah, I got to move my bishop. I get it. But my next thought was queen c5. That's like immediately what I'm thinking of. And it's probably going to win material. Even at the moment, I'm threatening to win material. Rook takes and takes. So I've got an open file. I've got a huge threat, probably game winning. And yeah, this is all because of the move f4. So probably plays a pretty decent move there, getting the knight out of dodge, but I think the damage is done for the most part. Dropping the c pawn here and dropping it with check as well. And now I'll probably give another, <laughs> another check. And I assume he's got to go in the corner, but I'm going to play this move regardless. Oh, that's not it. That's not it. I'm picking up pieces slowly here. Check, check, and check. And let's do another check. Why not? Check. Oh, now they go in the corner. Okay, let's invade. Let's get right in there. Let's get cozy with the king. Pawn Masseur, thanks for uh, the two years with Prime. Let's go, dude. Pawn Masseur, appreciate it. Uh, Tulio, 1990, four months. Jaber, 1977, thanks for the full year. Thanks, Jaybird. Um, I'm doing very well in this position, I can tell you that, man. Bishop to d4 is coming. And we're looking to say hello to the position. And I think in a very painful way, 
we can just play, well, I'll play h5 just to put the king in a secure box. Okay, resigned. I was gonna say, we'll play h5, put the king literally in a box. And from here, we're just play bishop f2. And I sit there and wait. Because when white runs out of pawn moves, they're gonna have to move their bishop and that'll be mate one. So just sit there and wait for the inevitable. GG. This one uh, was the London, but again, sort of sort of an unorthodox, we got the bishop. Remember, I've been saying guys, like in positions like this, I'm like dying to get this bishop. If I can take it, take it for my knight, I'm on cloud nine. And I've, I've got white giving it to me for no reason at all. So if you get your, your hands on your opponent's dark square bishop, when you play King Zinni with black, or a light squared bishop, if you play King Zinni and attack with white, you are sailing home free. Hey, I can't help it, Java. You know, I can't control it. But I, I definitely think the more instructive games will be in this part of the series. A lot of people are going for this uh, knight c3. What you guys have noticed is, <laughs> you know, people, they, they just send it. They just send it. As soon as they can attack your knight, I mean, they're like, you know, just crackheads. Just, oh my god! Like they just like malfunction. As soon as they can make a move that just attacks something, they just go, fucking, they go crazy. They just don't know how to not attack a piece. It's so funny to watch. Oh no! Well, guys, this isn't my fault. They're hanging pieces and resigning. Oh, dude. Look, this is not my fault, Java. I mean, I can't control these dudes, all right? They're the ones hanging pieces. I'm sorry. I can't do anything about it. Just a nice nine move win, thanks to the King's Indian speed run. When you play this opening, this will happen every time. Nine moves, just like this. All right, let's try again. Here we go. E defile. I know, I have to at least get into the position. You're right. Here we go. Oh, wow. That's very, very uh, aggro. So I'm actually kind of glad we got to see a move like this because, okay, you know, it does disrupt my natural order in the position. Uh, my first bit of advice, I guess, when someone's just shoving pawns down your throat is to create as much tension as possible and to just try to develop in ways that attack said pawns. So e6, easily, because it's a move we want anyway. But after this move, I wouldn't really give too much thought and I would just play this because I know that if things just like evaporate in the center and there's like a mass explosion trade, that it's just going to benefit me because my opponent's trying to play in a way that, you know, shouldn't technically should not be uh, that successful. So I'm going to take this. I'm going to take this. He's going to go that way. So this move at least develops with an idea to, you know, threaten the pawn in the middle of the board. So that's something with tempo. And then after this, probably would think, you know, hey, well, this bishop can develop and by pinning the knight, I'm actually making another threat on the d-pawn. So I take, bishop takes, knight takes d4, bishop takes here, I save my rook. It's kind of, I mean, it's looking pretty decent to me. It's looking pretty decent to me. There are other ways to, to play this position, like even right from the start, as soon as you saw f4 and c3, I could have just gone knight h6 and castled and my knight would get into the game. But I'm going to choose this way, which is a much more aggressive way of playing, which, I mean, just looks to punish this straight away. And no, I'm not going to play queen takes d4 and blunder. Bishop takes c6, you lose your whole queen. No. No. Clever combat. Thanks for the five gifted subs, buddy. Okay, let's do this. I wonder if he's going to play the move that I'm thinking he's going to play. It's not an issue. Yeah, so here's the move. It's not really an issue, but I am. I think I am going to do this. Like, I could play queen d7, and we could trade. His bishop would have to move. 
I would win this pawn. That looks pretty good, but I was thinking of going here. And I'm trying to figure out where that queen's going to go. Or sorry, where that bishop's going to go. Because, um, yeah, I was thinking of just king f8. Alpha, you know? We don't trade those. We don't trade those queens. Yeah, there's queen d7, but you only live once. The e pawn is hanging, so we're gonna get something. Depends where he puts his bishop here. He might go there. I mean, this looks like the most normal move. It's in the middle of the board. It kind of watches some squares. Uh, this move cards the bishop, but he's gonna get destroyed by knight c2. But. Basically this game, my opponent sort of overstepped with the pawns, had no pieces developed. So I always recommend taking the most concrete approach to that, the most punishing approach, and just throw everything you've got at those squares and you'll probably be able to, to cover them. Uh, this should be three, okay, that's interesting. So if I take here, then yeah, something can drop. There's a few things though. Number one, I'm looking at knight here because then I'm just attacking both bishops. Plain and simple. I'm also looking at bishop here because then I'm defending my knight again while winning a pawn and threatening to take this bishop. Both look pretty good, but knight f5 looks pretty, pretty good. Couple threats here. This is not rapid. I'm playing five minute games for this speed run. I think it's just a nice time control, can explain things and Kind of get into the position a little bit without worrying about just flagging, essentially. Yeah, even though that's not a bad move, defending everything, um, you know, the queen is going to have to move or you lose another piece. And the great thing about this is that I get to trade queens. <laughs> it's the greatest thing about that. I'm not, I'm not even considering taking this pawn when you're up material, especially like a piece, like significant material, then trading queens is the prescription. Okay. Rook takes, maintain the pressure. Couple threats here. And this check is fairly irrelevant. Let's bring our king here. We have a game-winning move. Bishop takes b2, so I certainly expect the knight to move. We're up a full piece, so just looking to develop, trade where possible. Like, even to just make my point, of course rook takes b2 is winning some stuff, but let's just keep it super simple. Let's trade, offer a trade here. Looking once again to trade. Keeping it real simple, following the basics. Okay, let's uh, try to hunt down some pawns. Now, what square is this king gonna walk into that's gonna blunder? A knight fork. That's the real question. Maybe e4. We go here and then, you know, we'll play this move for no reason at all. Bring the knight to d6. My opponent is offering a draw. It's a serious draw offer. Rook takes c3, but then that would have happened, and I would have a knight and some pass pawns. Look at what I was able to do. It's different. The way you guys see the game, you see rook takes c3, and it forces the variation with knight e4. The way I see the game is knight e8 forces the move king e4, and I have knight d6. So, I mean, we just see the game differently, guys. If you were able to see what I saw, of course you would go for this variation as well. You win more material. Built different. Yeah. 
life's always easier when you just take all your opponent's pawns with whatever piece you have, and then it's like, hey man, get your queen, <laughs> but it doesn't really matter. I've got so many extra pawns by that point. And there you go. I'm telling you. I'm telling you. When you see those forcing lines, you gotta go for them. This was interesting though. They came they came at us quickly with just e5. Just all of a sudden, right down our throat, e5, you know, we got pawns everywhere. And what I'm seeing is I went for a setup where every move I did was like all about attacking those weaknesses. By the way, let's say things got defended. My next move was probably gonna be knight here. My knight wants to go there. And from that square, it's also contributing. And then of course I do wanna get castle, but even my knight here and here, I'm probably gonna be winning a pawn against most players. Like we got people blundering pawns on e4 literally for free. So if you're building up pressure with one, two, three, four, five pieces, you'll probably win a pawn as well, so. Okay, knight c6 and d3. They don't, they don't like it. They, he's, he's having a, Diego, my boy, is having a look at it. And he's not liking what he sees. d3, the mark of a noob. Okay, well we're getting our moves in though. We are getting our moves in. Where are you going, bro? Okay. The nice thing about the way that I'm playing this opening is that you will never blunder a piece. And sometimes in positions with like knight c3, and this bishop pins you, they play knight d4, and either you have to like double your pawns, or you may even like lose a piece because you can, just can't defend it enough times. That'll never happen in this opening. It just won't, period. Um, I think, well, we want to do queen e1, but we know we need to play king h2 as well. So either move would be acceptable here. Okay, queen e1. I, uh, I'm curious if my opponent is gonna play the move. I think he is. Um, but honestly, we should probably learn from last game and play our play our moves in the correct order. Queen e1, knight d4, we would just take it, very happy with that. But queen e1, knight b4, and it's not really that bad, you just go back to d1, but the point is the knight's like threatening to take this pawn, and based on our setup, there's not a single piece that can guard that except a queen on d1. That's just how, how the setup goes. So before you play this move, it's a good idea to check for whether or not the knight can jump in safely to either one of those squares because it is a pain. Okay, boy, do we see a lot of uh, g5. Now, I will probably be selecting a few more slightly aggressive plans in this game, like b4 and a4, I'm absolutely going to be throwing in. It's not entirely part of our setup, but when our opponent castles this way, definitely is. Definitely is. So let's get these moves in. These are going to be some good space gaining moves. We're also threatening to win a piece. And here it looks like we even open up some, some lines as well. Why do we need the queen on e1? Well, the knight was pinned. So by putting the queen there, it frees up our knight. Also, if our opponent plays g4, we always want to be able to play this. But it's just good not to be in a pin. So queen e2, we're still in a pin. Queen e1 is kind of our move that we've been going to to get out of out of that nasty bishop pin. I knew it looks a little unorthodox, but the rook wants to stay on f1 because it often supports the f4 push. So you don't need to put your rook here. Just kind of a flexible square. Where does the dark square bishop develop to? Well, you've noticed that it pretty much hasn't moved, right? And this happens, I keep saying it, this happens a lot in this opening. Just get used to it. 
This bishop doesn't need to develop. You can do so much with the rest of your pieces. And hey, leave it there on c1. It does just as much as if it was on d2. I mean, I'll use it to take this pawn. <laughs> There's that. How's that for you? Let's take that and bring this bishop back to e3. Yeah, Java Bandit, it helps. Well, it depends if they storm you as well, because if they don't, you can still feel comfortable pushing, expanding your own pawns if they are not doing anything here. But yeah, if they're putting their king over here and they got a couple pieces in front, the pawns will do really well at poking those pieces away from natural squares. So take this, hit the rook. Um, I think black might get really excited about like knight g4, but it doesn't really do anything. Number one, we can move our king, but we can also take and go knight h4 and I don't think there's going to be many, uh, many threats there. Okay, um, knight h4 just to make a point about how there's not really any threats. Knight h4. I know it looks like black's the one doing stuff here, but not really. Knight h4 is a typical move for us. Rook a8 looks like a great move. Hey, Griffin. How are you, bud? Uh, just a couple, yeah, a couple days ago. This week, earlier this week, so. Only a couple days in, man. Didn't miss much. Yeah, I, I had a feeling that we would be seeing... Uh, this move make an appearance, uh, it truly just is not, I mean, black just doesn't have enough pieces for this to work, but you still have to appreciate what your opponent is intending. So what is my opponent intending? Probably he wants to sack, maybe after playing this so that he can play queen takes and then rook there and then mate me. So at least I should be aware of you know, what my opponent wants to do. No, I don't think it worked, <laughs> but that's what they want. So I'm probably going to play this move, f4. I just uh, can definitely see the queen being useful defending that square. Nice to have an escape square for my king. And if pawn takes as well, so first of all, yep, that's exactly what we expected, right? That, that our opponent would want to sack there and get the queen over, all that. Um, I'm probably going to just take here. I've got my queen defending it, so I'm kind of okay for the moment. Yeah, I think we'll probably take this. Z takes f5 good? I think a lot of things are, are good here. <laughs> it's hard to single them out, but yeah, that would be a fine move. But yeah, even when you're totally winning, like I'm up a piece here. But I'm still going to take a moment and try to appreciate what my opponent's up to. Because clearly he's got a plan here. He's not just giving away a knight for nothing. Even if his plan is wrong, I still want to know what it is. So I can evaluate it to be correct or incorrect. Here, I would expect you know something like takes, takes, rook takes, takes, g3, right? King here, that's maybe an attempt. Unfortunately for my opponent, I have, you know, some other things I can do, like I can sack pieces, but that might be his intention to try to mate me. It's just not, it's just not enough. Like, I don't think it's enough, truly. I don't think he's got enough pieces. So I feel comfortable playing this. Also, I, I foresee a future potentially where there's like a bishop check here that my opponent can't deal with and he gets mated like that. So. You also have to be concerned about that. I like this move because, hey, now there's uh, no sacrifice angle. So f6 looks pretty nice. Defend this bishop. A rook down here on a8 is also going to be good. I haven't really moved that guy the whole game. My opponent is running out of pieces, so I figured he would probably go for this. He's trying. 
definitely respect it. He's trying to create something. I, wonder, I was wondering if he's going to play queen or rook there. Um, but as I mentioned, you know, bishop h3 is probably going to be a very unpleasant move to see in general. And tough to play for black because, like I said, you really are running out of pieces. This is not a bad move at all. I like it. is let's push <laughs> i think there's actually a, a weird way where you can maybe uh, deliver a fun mate Um, that one was always going to be decided by time. Hey, he played pretty well. He had, um, he had a plan and he's looking to execute it. He has a worse position, so you can't fault the guy for going for a plan like this. Cause I mean, that's going to work against a lot of the chat. You know, this guy has intentions. He had F5, he built that whole thing up with G3. I could see some people getting mated by that attack, but we snuffed it out. You're able to stay ahead of it. Um, but in terms of the opening, Right, this is standard standard stuff for us now. H3, knight d2, king h2, c3 ahead of time to take squares away from the knight. And because we saw the king castling this way, yeah. Yeah. The the, the pawns can start storming. Queen e1 is our kind of special move that we go for. Gets us out of this pin and allows for knight h4 and various other moves. So overall the game kind of played itself up to a certain point. And don't be worried about this bishop. Don't feel the need to develop it. Uh, there's uh, there's no rush. It's often the last piece to develop. Oh, that looks very non-threatening. I am happy to see that. Okay. Maybe... E5 next. Okay, he's uh, he's playing in a kind of weird way, I would say. This move, he's really just kind of all in on mate. I think I'm gonna have to, you know, play very aggro in in reply. So D5 looks like a good move to. Kick the bishop away. Knight takes g5 is going to hit the queen. So tempo. All looks good here. It's a shame we're not just like winning a bunch of material here. Almost feels like we deserve to be. Um, but yeah, e4 you can take here. Still probably a good move, e4 just not completely winning or anything. I think e4 is still reasonable. Are there other moves to play? I expect h4 is going to happen by, by black. So, I mean, let's go for it. Yeah, I thought that he would Java, definitely. It would have been a much better move. But again, I would have continued with the same thing. When your opponent's like just launching stuff at you on the side of the board, you just play in the center. That's just what you do. I expect knight c3. Good move. 
Let's go bishop here. We'll bring our knight back if we get attacked. And we can't take this pawn because his rook was hanging, which is why he did that. <laughs> it's a good move, rook b1. Sneaky. Sneaky, sneaky. Yeah, we'll just get all our pieces developed. This is a... I mean, I keep pointing this out, but people can't just walk up the board and mate you. That's not possible. Like, it really only happens if you truly, like, cooperate. <laughs> Let them do it. So I'll even open up this file, because, dude, trust me. I'm going to be the... <laughs> this is my file. I'm not stuck in here with you. You're stuck in here with me. I promise you that. You know, I can actually even consider this move, which is kind of a funny move. Because now the queen doesn't even have that square, so I'm threatening to actually trap his own queen on his own h1 square. Pretty embarrassing. Knight here, then I, I go here, and the knight is also going to be lost, because there's nowhere to move the knight. My dude is down so bad here. <laughs> hey, he's the one that opened the h file. Now I'm the one who's punishing on it, and he's resigning. That's what I'm saying. Once you get your king to g7, it's a very liberating feeling that your rooks can suddenly swing on the last rank to the open file. So don't feel scared about opening up this because I mean, you can use that more than they can. Man, what's with... Hang on, do Canadians just suck at chess? Why are all the Canadians in the 1100 to 1200 division? <laughs> do we suck? I know there might be knight takes e5 here, but I mean, I just gotta stick to the system, boys. Okay, he's really pushing it though, isn't he? Oh my goodness. What am I dealing with? Canadians are so bad at chess. Oh my god. Put all the pawns on dark squares and then give up your light square bishop. I have no words. Oh, this is horrendous. This hurts my brain. <laughs> I have the coolest V day picture. Thanks, bro. I'll have you know that my. What? Who are these guys? And how much are they getting paid? Because it's not by me. Very instructive speed run, guys. Glad you're tuning in. Very instructive. King's Indian attack, how to win. This is gonna be for 1200. This is the game. <laughs> Jakob, I appreciate the engagement though. One chat message at a time. Some people got gifted subs without ever speaking. You know, those are the guys on Tinder that don't even have, like they're just giga chats. They just have unreal profiles, they're handsome dudes, they have dogs in their photos, and they don't even say anything, right? They just get all the girls. And we got a few Giga Chads in chat as well. They don't even type, they probably don't even follow the channel, and they just get gifted subs. They sit there, do nothing. Just complete Sigmas. Giga chat. Yeah, exactly. Let's get castled. Knight d2, h3. You guys know the drill. Always leave this pawn. Just take back. Knight on c6. So you guys know, in general, we're interested in c3, but especially... Especially king h2. Yeah, just want to step out of the way of that. And okay, the, the trade doesn't really bother me. What I will say is, remember, when they take 
We don't want to take with a knight and get a queen trade, so. In general, I've been playing positions where the queens stay on the board. If he takes, I'll probably take with the queen and then just drop my queen back to make way for a potential f4. So if I take with a the knight, then the queen trade happens. I don't want it. But why didn't I take with the bishop and then bring the bishop back? Well, if I take with the queen and put it back to e2, then it's like I developed the queen e2. If I take with the bishop and put it back to g2, then I still have to play queen e2. So I save a move by taking with the queen because I would, I would need to play queen e2 anyway. Ooh, that move does not look right. I see g6 and I'm not liking it. 300th LHS. Hey, testament to the support. Thanks a lot. Holy cow. So he might be going here and here. I just have a feeling that might be on his mind. Because knight b3 would normally win material here, but bishop f8, he could be going for the reach round. He could be going for the full, you know, five year plan project kind of move. Let's play queen here. You don't think there's any chance? You guys have no respect for Hassan915? I think he's about that life. Maybe we should find out. I have to play knight b3 next move. Okay. My god, man. We see g5 so often, don't we? It's, it's crazy. Move g5 is a fan favorite, it really is. So I see g5, we're gonna go with another maneuver that we use a lot, knight c4, the knight's gonna drop back to e3, and we're looking at uh, some squares. But guys, hold the phone, in fact, hold everything, because right now, if you are a pleb, you can vote on your favorite Slim Jim flavor. Which Slim Jim flavor hits different? Make sure to vote. I get five cents every time you vote. Hit up that Slim Jim. Get those votes in. This is very important. I mean, you know, pause everything. Pause everything. I know. I got four or five year subs that are telling me, look, man, I wish I was a pleb right now to be able to vote on my favorite Slim Jim flavor. I know. It's one of the premium pleb privileges we have in the channel. Don't worry guys, there's still 15 seconds to vote on your favorite Slim Jim flavor. I don't know, it just pops up on screen for me. I don't know if it does for you guys. Otherwise, you guys have Sigma ad block on. For your sub. All right, there we go. I just made five cents times 13 votes or whatever. This is big. Huge for the bottom line. Thank you very much to all the plebs. Huge, huge profit there for the channel. Okay, back to business here. King h7 was played. I can tell you it doesn't look like a great move. It doesn't look like a great one. Um, I'm probably thinking about the move b4 and a4 just to gain more space. So I'll do this one to start, but essentially like one of my pieces arriving to e3, maybe a rook getting to d1. That looks like a good start. I am not in a rush to play this because while it does open things up, you know, my king is, it's possible that my king is also a little bit weak. Okay, I see this move, which means I'm very comfortable playing this, playing rook d1 and just putting, putting pressure on that guy right there. Okay, I don't know what he's doing and I definitely don't care. Technically, this pawn is being threatened, although it's unclear if that's the worst we can do to him. Okay, queen e7, that looks like a pretty good move. You know, getting out of the, uh, the pin is very important.
Notice how he's actually kind of playing the game the same way. His bishop still hasn't developed and his position is pretty reasonable, right? It's not like a huge issue that that hasn't happened. Um, so I'm gonna take this and I, I'm gonna go for what I think is a rather easy plan to understand. I'm just gonna attack the pawn. <laughs> Keep it nice and easy, right? I have an open file, I'm kind of ahead in development. May as well take and just target it. Oh, that's great. We have our timer. You know what that means? It means my laundry is done. Go laundry. Laundry for the boys. Traumatizing. Why is that your uh, wake up alarms? Something's happening over here. I think uh, I think h4 is a nice way to keep everything closed, but I'm also looking at queen d6, and I think this is very simple because we win material. We're hitting the knight. Lots of different ways to play, but I'll pick the one that seems to simplify the most. Now, if I can, you know, I'm looking to grab this guy, but I wasn't really interested in doing that. I was actually hoping I could take it with the bishop and go for a checkmate. Wasn't able to happen, that's okay. We'll grab this pawn and maintain the seventh rank. This will be checkmate, but I assume it's not gonna be that easy. Well, maybe it will. Let's try. You can't fault a guy for trying. You know, I'm just a just a happy-go-lucky lad. Oh, maybe here? Might have to go all the way back, bro. Damn. All the way back, eh? Might have to go all the way back. No place for your bishop out here. Unlucky, bruh. I think bishop f8, or bishop c8, pretty reasonable. Fortunately, we're gonna play this. I don't think we can uh, do it just yet. This move looks reasonable. I'm gonna play g5. Let's get our king out of the way. We got five seconds, it's not very long. What the heck? This is a critical game. So we're gonna need to make this pre-move. Rook g1? That was a devious one by the guy. Now let's make this pre-move. I'm unsure what he's gonna do here. He could be cooking up something a little, cooking up something a little nasty. Yeah, okay, this helps a lot. Let's take both of these pawns. Oh, that's actually helpful. And fortunately, our speed is a little bit too much for Hassan. And we're exactly 1200. Perfect. Perfect. My username's speed only. Come on, man. You're not gonna flag me. It can't happen. It can't happen. Oh, he gave a great fight. But don't you think his mind is blown right now? He's got a guy that's playing slightly better than him the whole game. Just slightly though, nothing crazy. And all of a sudden with three and a half seconds, he just, like this, this guy, me, the white player, just uncorks this unbelievable ability. Just <laughs> like all of a sudden, he just plays like all of a sudden these insane perfect pre-moves just come out it's like what the hell just happened to me bro just got violated for no reason don't worry guys he will be getting his rating back as will uh everyone who plays the account it does say this on the uh on the account because we are playing some pretty good players who would definitely beat a lot of 1200s in that same situation so don't worry they're gonna get their ratings back Will he get his sanity back? No. Dignity, also no. 
um, his will to live, no. But but the rating will be refunded. Hey guys, hope you enjoyed the video. As always, if you're not subscribed to the channel, you can do so right here. And don't forget to click that bell and turn the post notifications on. And if you're looking for more of the King's Indian speedrun, you can check it out right here. Thanks for watching.